Hi, I'm Louise. I've always used microscopes but never known how to do it properly, so I'm interested in learning about how they work and what different bits there are to it. Uh, I'm Louise Walno. Uh, I'm a retired head teacher, and in recent years I've devoted a lot of time to developing and teaching courses about microscopy to a whole range of different people but particularly members of the beekeeping fraternity. Hello, I'm Chris Thomas. I used to work for a research company and was responsible for the microscopes there. And now I run my own company. In this video, we want to touch on an important optical element of the microscope that assists the magnification, and that is the condenser. Mm -hmm. so, You'll remember from when you were looking at the parts of the microscope where the condenser was. Could you perhaps show it on these three different microscopes? So, it's always under the stage, um, as far as I can tell, on these three at least. So mm -hmm. you've got it on here, here, and here, mm -hmm. on this one. And the, um, the condenser is important for a particular reason in terms of illumination. Can you just elaborate, Lewis, please? Yes. The condenser has the task of imaging the patch of light that emerges either from the base of the microscope or from an independent microscope lamp mm -hmm. on the specimen. Yeah. So it superimposes that illumination on the specimen. And why is that important? Well, what does that actually achieve? Well, with a condenser, if used and adjusted properly, right. it's possible to get even illumination right across the field of view. Mm -hmm. Initially, I would say that there are three things you need to do to create a really good image to view. First of all, uh, you have to extract the detail that you want to look at, and that's to do with resolution, and that's controlled by largely by the objective lens. You have to magnify that detail to make it big enough to view comfortably. Mm -hmm. And it's the objective lens and the eyepiece lens working together that achieve that. Mm -hmm. okay. The other thing that you need is enough contrast between the specimen and its background for you to be able to see the detail clearly. Mm -hmm. yeah. If, as Chris said, you have too much light swilling around, coming into the objective, mm -hmm. it degrades the image right. and you don't get that contrast. If on the other hand, the cone of light that you're creating yeah. to go into the objective is not large enough, mm -hmm. then you won't get enough resolution, you won't extract the detail sufficiently well. Okay. We're getting into quite a lot of complicated detail now on, to, on, on terms of the optics. Um, of the of the condensers and the the microscopes, right. um, but there is a key um, iris aperture yeah. that has to be adjusted within the condenser that so actually optimizes both um, how much glare you get and the cone of light that then is Absolutely. Dissolved. Is it called the iris aperture because of your eye? It's because it works like your eye. Right. An, an, an iris a diaphragm, which is what these have, is something that can expand or contract. And if you... Um, Do you remember how you did that, Louise? I was on this one, I did it with this, yes. this yeah. little bit here, yeah. and that moves round. That's right. So that opens an aperture, and it's a circular aperture, or it closes it, very much like the iris in your, in your okay. eye. Okay. You have exactly the same sort of thing here and here. Right. The difference is that the adjustment is made with a little lever. Oh, they've got a lever. And um, that one there. That's it. Yeah, that also has a has a little lever that... Um, okay. That and what happens there, and this is really answering Chris's question from earlier on, is that the size of the gap in the middle of the iris diaphragm controls the size of the cone of light that's coming up from the object into the front of the objective lens. So it doesn't glare it out if you That's right. the and right you, amount. If you can get it just right, then you get a good balance between lack of glare and but plenty of, of uh, contrast. Although it's very difficult to see because the condensers are actually built in within the microscope, they can be taken 
um, taken out and you can look at the top of the, the lens. And they will often have a little figure on the side saying NA, numerical aperture, oh, and like giving a figure. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. And we came across numerical aperture yeah. when we were looking at the, at the objectives. Yeah. yeah. And the idea is that you need to have an object, uh, a condenser with a numerical aperture that is equal to or greater than the numerical aperture on the objective that you're using. Okay. Yeah. So Another thing about uh, condensers is that sometimes when you're using low power lenses, very low mm -hmm. power lenses, you can't get a big enough patch of light to fill the field of view. And many condensers have what's called a flip top arrangement. This, this one does. And if you pull a little lever across, can you see that? Yeah. The top lens actually moves out of position mm. and back in. But you only use the lens out of position with the very low power lenses, okay. low power objective lenses. And ironically, if you're using a, an, an objective with a numerical aperture of 1.25, which has got the oil bridge between the objective and the sample, um, you need to have a corresponding condenser that also provides the light at that intensity. Now, um, I don't know whether we can see the, the writing on the condenser, but there is often a little label there giving you the numerical aperture of the condenser. And if uh, an air one, like on that machine, um, is 0.95, so that's not strong enough to actually utilize it. But on this Meopla and on this old Watson, it's 1.3. But it will actually require an oil bridge between the condenser and the sample. So you've got your slide, you've got your condenser, an oil drop touching the condenser and the slide underneath. And then on the top, you've got an oil drop touching the top of the sample and touching the lens system to get the maximum light going through. So you have to do that yourself? You would have to do that yourself, yes. and that's a, that's another uh, another exercise in another video. Um, but most microscopes work in the range of four times objective through to forty times objective in air very well. Okay. So condensers, the hidden important element of any microscope, um, but it's well worth finding out a bit more about them and using them properly. Yeah. Right, take 257. If you want to learn more about microscopy, all you need to do is ask these two and they'll tell you everything. Uh, we're not just the founts of all knowledge, we rely on other people as well. And we're a member of several societies and clubs. So for example, there's the Quicket Microscopical Club, Yes, there's the Postal Microscopy Society and the Royal Microscopical Society. And if you look online, you'll also find various sites such as Mixscape, which are great for people who are interested in microscopy. And of course, look on YouTube and find our videos. Thank you. Bye.